Hey, it's Rainiac. It's Mel the Train Shooter back in the studio and back with another Let's Make for you. And if you don't know what the Let's Makes are, they're a series of videos where we look at common battlefield elements and common themes and terrain items within wargaming. Yeah, and I do a complete tutorial from start to finish showing you a few different techniques of how to make those various things. Now, we're, we're well stuck into the list and if you're looking for more Let's Makes and more elements, yeah, you can check out the playlist over there. <laughs> Okay, right one day, guys. <laughs> yeah, now in this Let's Make, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at sandbag fortifications. So we're going to be looking at sandbag walls, sandbag uh, fire points, and we'll even make a sanga. So come on over to the desk and let's get stuck in, eh? Come on. Right guys, sandbag fortifications. Now we've we've looked at sandbags in the past in a more detailed, all the different sort of high tech stuff you can do with it. So if you want to follow on from this one and really take your sandbags to the next level, yeah, check out the sandbag video. Okay, now this is more a complete start to finish one. So let's very quickly go through what we've got. Now we've got green stuff here. Okay, this is our modeling stuff. We've got Milliput and we've got Das uh, Modeling Putty and air drying clay. This stuff I would use if I'm doing a couple of sandbags to add to a piece. So I really want to make sure they're detailed and look really sharp and nice. Okay, it's not really suitable for mass production of, you know, fortifications and stuff like that because it uses so much and it can become very expensive. So if you're after a couple of sandbags, throw on a base or throw on a tank or, you know, on a fortification, you know, green stuff's good. But if you're after doing like, you know, a whole set, skip that. Moving on, yeah, we've got Milliput. Milliput is a good sculpting uh, putty, nice and hard, it holds texture really well. Once again, it's it's roughly the same cost, you know, between the two. So you're gonna get more sandbags out of your air drying clay than you will with Milliput, but you'll get finer detail with the Milliput. Now with the Milliput, I'm gonna use this for just one of them, okay? And now we're gonna use Das Modeling Putty for the rest because the rest are, are big volumes. So when I say the rest, what are we actually doing in this video? Well, let me tell you guys. Okay, first off, I've got a long strip of EPVC, expanded PVC, yeah, board. Okay, and I'm going to be using that, okay, to make a sandbag wall. Okay, on top of that, we've got this curved bit, and we're going to make a fire point with this one, and then finally, We've got this square piece here, and I'm going to use that to make a sanger. Okay, and if you don't know what a sanger is, a sanger is a, a, a what you call it, a sandbag emplacement. Okay, so we'll put those together. Now you can use other basic materials. We've used lots of different things. There's other videos in the in this Let's Play that explain basic. Yeah, but EPVC is my preferred. You can get scraps of it, yeah, from your local printers. Cut it with a knife. You know, it, it's a nice material to work with. Now I've got one other sort of specialist tool and I've got my little spatula, okay? And that's for sort of making my dents and indents and that sort of thing. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to roll out some sandbags. So we're gonna start off with a basic wall, okay? And I'm gonna use the most basic techniques on this just to mass produce a, a big wall. Now you'll notice I've got some masking tape down there, okay? And there's a reason for this. On the masking tape, we have some lines drawn. Okay, we have two lines with five mil in between them at the top, and then two lines with eight mil between them at the bottom. Okay, and the reason for this is quite simple. Yeah, we get our roll of what you call it, roll of air drying clay. Yeah, and we keep rolling it until, keep going. Yeah, it fits in that five mil line. Okay, if it's a little bit thick anywhere, just smooth it off and get it in that five mil line. Okay, so that's in the five mil line. We move it down to the eight mil line and what you wanna do is you wanna squash it down until it fills the eight, eight mil. Yeah, so just along like that. Always start from one end and go to the other because as you squeeze it down, it will get longer. Yeah, so if you start at one end and do another end, you'll end up with a bump in the middle. Yeah, so start at one end, one end, and just work your way along. Yeah. And smooth it out a bit. And what this allows you to do is it standardizes all your sandbags. So if I then get this bit, okay, roll it to five mil, press it out to eight mil, 
I will end up with sandbags that are exactly the same size. And that's one of the key tricks to getting much of a realistic looking sandbag. So, cut it off there. Yeah, put my dents in. And you want your dents to be roughly a centimetre long. Yeah, so I'm going to carry on and just put dents in down here. Next off, once your dents are in, when you press it down, it sort of bulges out at the edge. Yeah, all you need to do is come in, yeah, and with a sharp edge, just push those in. So, once all they're done, you end up with a strip like that. Yeah, and it's just a matter of placing it down on your piece. Now, it's a little bit short for this one, so I'll have to do a couple more sandbags at the side. So I'm going to go for roughly there, just tap it down a little, just so it sticks. We're going to be adding grit and everything to the side, so don't worry too much about it sticking. Just get it down so it holds itself. So the next thing I need to do is I need to slowly build this up. Now, I will continue with this technique. Okay, and oh, that's going off slightly there. And I'm going to lay it down, but I'm going to overlap them, if you know what I mean. So the next, I'll put a couple there, then the next layer will go sort of halfway, so they overlap. Okay, so I'm going to crack on with that, and... We can come back once I've done a little bit of that, eh? See you shortly. So there you have it. There's our second row. Slightly overlapped. It's got a little bit off in places. It's okay. We can get away with things like that. Yeah. If I was doing what you call it, sort of scale military modelling, then all I'd do is I'd mark my cut marks, my dash marks on here at a centimetre. Yeah. But I'm a bit slapdash for that. So next thing I need to do is just continue building this up. So I'm going to put another couple of layers onto it and then finish it off with a couple of odd placements. Yeah, just to break it up a bit. Essentially what I'm looking to do is to get roughly up to his sort of waist height. So he could duck behind it, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to crack on with that and I'll come back once we've got that layered up. Yeah, see you shortly, guys. OK, then there you are. OK. Now, obviously not perfect, it's quick and easy. Yeah, you do have some issues with what you call it, air drying clay. It's, sometimes it flakes. Don't worry about that. We'll clean it up when it gets to what you call it, to the uh, painting stage. What you can do is start letting it set, then just give it a brush over with a damp brush and that'll smooth all that out. But I'm not overly concerned. And you can see how I've staggered them up to give sort of different heights and to break up so it's not just one continuous wall. And if I put that down there, and I get my little rushki, yeah, and I put in there, you can sort of see, yeah, how easy that was. There's probably about 30 p's worth of materials in that, okay? Now, all that we need to do now is to let that dry. We could actually grit it right now, but I want to let it dry first before we do. So, I'm going to let that dry, and what we're going to do next is we're going to have a look at milliput, okay? And we're going to make a five position using our milliput, okay? So, I'm gonna mix them up and then we'll come back when we're ready to do that one. See you shortly, guys. Right, scratch that. We'll get round to the milliput five position in a minute. I sort of got carried away. You know what I'm like. Anyway, right, they're all dry now, okay? And you can see we've got a lovely little barricade there. Yeah, easy to knock out, dirt cheap. Next thing to do with this is I've gotta grit it up and then we'll take it through the painting, but I wanna get all the pieces to the same stage and then we'll do those you know, in one hit. Yeah, so with that in mind, yeah, I've also been building something else. This is our Sangha, okay? Now, there's exactly the same principles as going into this, went into this. They're just the strips. So if I bring it up, yeah, you can sort of tell that, can't you? I'll do it right, so. Get the angle right, Bose. Anyway, yeah, simply overlapping. I've built it up, I've got about five layers to, to the sort of like gun positions and a, another three layers up on the corners to sort of really give it some depth. These are what you call barbecue skewers, okay? And on top of that, it's mounted on EPVC and I've got a bit of EPVC here and what I've done is I've just beveled the edges and that's gonna stick on there. Now the reason that's important is because with a sandbag sanger, uh, it would have a tin roof and then you would have sandbags put on top of it, sort of like to help prevent it against mortar strikes. One mortar would take it straight out, but you know, to help protect it. Okay, so, yeah, trust me, when things are coming at you, you'll take any protection you can, you can get. So I've been cutting out more of me, watch your little sandbags, yeah, and these are literally just snip straight through. I just need to shape them up a bit. And what I'm going to do is, the idea is I want them overhanging. 
Yeah, so let's go. I don't even know what way to go. What I'm doing is I'm putting it on there and then I'm pushing that down flat. Yeah, and just leaving the sort of sandbag hanging over the edge. So if I bring that up, yeah. And the reason being is I'm going to do a row all the way around. So I need that to be pretty flat to be truthful. Yeah. A row all the way around and then a row straight across the, uh, a complete sort of layer, layer, layer. Yeah, strip, strip, strip across the top to give it the sandbag roof. Yeah, so I'm going to crack on with this now. Yeah, and get all the sandbags round. Yeah, and once it's sort of done, I'll bring it back and show you there. Right, see you shortly, guys. Right, guys, there's the outer rim done. Okay, and I'm not really worried about the, the sandbags coming in because they're going to get covered with our layers. But I just wanted to get it looking like the sandbags were sort of draping over the top of the metal. Yeah, so they sort of hang over the edge by about, by about four mil. Okay, it's a little rough and ready, but once it's all painted up, it'll be perfectly fine. Yeah, you tend to get these sort of like marks on it where you smudge it in, but they're going to be covered over. Next job is, I just want to put a little bit of, of clay in there, and then I'm just going to build up with our strips, okay, just like we did with these. Okay, straight across the top and just finish this off. So once that's done, I'll bring it back, guys. So there we have it, guys. It's uh, still drying a little bit, and it's not perfect at the back, but you've got to let the little things go. Yeah, I'm learning that as part of becoming a better artist, as they say. Artisan, artist, I haven't decided yet. Yeah, but I've got to start beating myself up over terrain. That's the basic techniques for getting the sanger together. Okay, now the next stage on this is obviously to grit it, and then we're going to base coat it and paint it up, and we'll cover different ways of painting sandbags. But before we do that, we need to nip over to the Milliput one. So, let's do, do a little fire point, and I can show you individual sandbags and a couple of tr little tricks, eh? Come on, let's crack on. Okay, we've covered the dust stuff. Now I want to show you Milliput. Now Milliput's quite good because you can do more detail in it. It sort of sits in between dust and green stuff with regards to, you know, what you can do with it and that sort of stuff. It's a two-part epoxy compound. I mean, this is the stuff. Yeah. And by two-part epoxy, basically, it comes in two parts. You roll them both together a bit like green stuff. But yeah, it causes a chemical reaction and it goes hard. Okay. Drying time is pretty similar to green stuff, to be perfectly honest. If if not a little bit, what you call it, a little bit quicker. Now, you roll this together, you get that. Okay? And what I'm going to do is, we're going to be building a little fire point on here. Okay? Nothing too massive, nothing like the bunker. But, unlike the bunker where we did strips, what we're going to do with this one is, we're going to do individuals. Individual sandbags. Okay? So, first, roll into my five, my five mil lines. Yeah, making a mess, folks. Yeah, like that. Yeah, so that's a five mil roll. Drop it in the middle of our eight mil spacings for the. Let's move it off. Yeah, give me a spatula, a little bit of water. Yeah, and then start chopping them. And we want them as individuals. Yeah, so all I'm doing is just coming down, cutting straight in, and cutting them straight through. Okay, now when you cut them straight through, you'll end up with this. Let me bring it up for you. Yeah, something like that. Tiny in it. Yeah, right, jobs to do. Sandbags tend to have tucked in ends, so tuck in the ends. Yeah, tap them flat. Oh, someone wants me. I'm a busy person, aren't I? Yeah, and then just tuck the corners down okay because sandbags they tend to watch it the corners don't tend to stick up the sand tends to settle now when i'm putting these on i'm going to slap that slap bang in the middle how about there yeah, we don't have to worry about too much detail on that so if i bring it up nice and simple okay some people like to put little seams seams themes <laughs> Yeah, in the sandbags. It's just a matter of getting a blade yeah, and just dragging it along like that. Yeah, and you can get that little line in. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock, knock a load of these together because I've got to build this up. 
okay because to be truthful with the detailing with these you're only going to see them on the top bags so i'll build up the bulk and once we've got it built up using exactly that just nipping the edges placing them down yeah once we've got it built up then we'll come back and i'll show you some more detailing stuff yeah right i'm gonna crack on see you in a sec right guys there you have it okay now all individuals just simply piled on top of each other i've gone pretty regular to get the basic structure up and then on the top i've sort of gone iggledy piggledy yeah, and you can see where you're going to come from. Now, I've just placed them down, but we need to do a bit of shaping. Yeah, good thing about Milliput is you can use moisture as a lubricant. Yeah, so sandbags aren't really square. Okay, they sort of dip at the side. They'll always have a little bit of empty bit unless they've been filled by automated machines. So all I'm doing is I'm coming along and just at the, the sort of very edges. Yeah, I'm just tipping them down a bit. Yeah, same on this side. Yeah, so they're more of a slope, if you know what I mean, rather than coming to a hard edge. Yeah, when you do press down, make sure they don't sort of bulge out too much. Yeah, a bit there. Now, next thing is, obviously, where you'd have a sandbag coming down there, you'd have a bit of a crease, and I'm going to put a bit of a crease into it. Yeah, to do it, I'm going to use a clay shaper. Now, these are from Royal Sovereign in the UK. Yeah, and they're just silicon tip, different shapes. Yeah, I went with a bit of saliva, and then I can just, yeah, oh, get it up here both so you can show, yeah, put a line in there. Where else do we want a line? We want a line in there, don't we? Yeah, because it would sort of sit there. Yeah, but not in that way. It would sort of dent like that. Yeah, yeah, push that down. Yeah, you see how the little dents go in? Okay, so that one's a good one, isn't it? Yeah. Next thing is near the edges, you're gonna have a, a couple of watch clips sort of indents. Yeah. And so coming along. Yeah, and all I'm doing is putting those lines in. Need to refine that. Right, I'm going to crack on and do this. Yeah, can you see it? I'm back in a sec. That's all them in. Yeah, and it's just, it's going to give us spaces for what you call it for our dry brush and our watches, washes to catch. Now, the next thing is they're quite smooth. Now, to be truthful, you probably wouldn't see the texture unless it was really coarse, hessian sandbags. Yeah, this sort of scale. But yeah, bit of a damp cloth over just something firm, come along, tap all over it, okay, if you bring it up, it gets rid of your finger marks and gives it a bit of a texture, and there we go, yeah, it's quite subtle, you're probably struggling to see it, but it's got a nice texture, that I'm just getting rid of with my finger, you know what, I'm going to put some seam lines in this. I'm not going to do them on the other side, but we'll do it on this side. So once again, yeah, because that one's still showing, just drag it along. Yeah, just like that. Helps if you've got steady hands. <laughs> Making the right pig's ear of this. Right, I'm going to crack on doing this and I'll see you in a sec. Okay then, there we are, and there are the lines. Okay, now like I said, I've only done them on this side. If I flip it round, you see the difference it makes. Yeah. The other thing I've done is I've sort of come in and just the, not with this, with that blade. Yeah. But just at the sort of very edges. Yeah. I've continued that seam round on various different ones. Yeah. And although it's still very subtle. Okay. Let me get that there. There you go. Although it's really subtle. When we get to the washing and the dry brushing, yeah, that's when that will pop up. Now, it's obviously a five point, so people are going to fire at it. So let's put some bullet holes into it. Yeah, so what I want to do is bullet hole here. Yeah, and what I'm doing, yeah, is making a little hole. Yeah. Sort of lifting the edges up so it's like it's material that's ripped and dragging it down. Yeah. A little, little stabby stabby to replicate the sand. 
Yeah, uh, we need another one, don't we? Uh, put one in there. Stubby, yeah. stubby, stubby. Another one there, perhaps. Yeah. So, lift it out. Yeah. There we go. There's our bullet holes in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Clean that up a bit. There you go. Okay. Right, that's essentially how to sculpt the individual sandbags. Put this up, you know, put your creases in, make them nat natural, indent the edges, put your seam lines in, and you get a lovely piece. Now, it certainly is a step up from that sort of technique, yeah? But that's mass producing, yeah? These are for your more featured little bits. Like I say, if you want to go full board, then go for the, the watch up green stuff. Now we're at a stage where we can grit these up. So the next thing is we'll grit them and base coat them, and then we'll come back and talk about uh, painting them up. So very quickly, quick talk you through on gritting and painting them. See you sec. Right guys, they're all ready for gritting now, and basically we've got to get some PVA on it, drop a little bit of grit on it, and then seal it all in one go. And what I'm using is I've got a bit of PVA here on my palette. Okay, and I've mixed it with about a third water. So one third water, two parts PVA, just to water it down that a little. You don't really need neat PVA for sticking on grit. Yeah, it doesn't take much PVA to stick on grit. Now, all I'm gonna do, and I'll just show you on one piece because it's the same on the others. Yeah, is, get your brush. Yeah, give it a coat where you've walked down PVA. Okay, and we'll come back once I've done this, yeah. Okay, that's all glued up now. Okay, so we've got a nice thin coat all the way around, and I've made sure I've gone round the edges. Okay, now if I'm going to bring the basing grit up, and in the basing grit, yeah, it's mainly fine sand with a couple of larger bits, yeah. There's not much room for feature rocks in here, yeah. So all I'm going to do is just sprinkle it on, yeah, just like that. Yeah. Probably be better if I did it the other way so you could see it, wouldn't it? So if I hold it that way. And then, just like that, right? As you can see, it's going on nice and easy. Right, I'm just gonna carry on doing this and then what I'll do is I'll grit up the other pieces as well. So I'll see you in a second, guys. Okay, guys, they're all gritted up now and all I need to do is to leave them to dry overnight. Once they're dry, yeah, we'll, we'll put the base color down and then we'll start exploring different ways of painting sandbags. Okay, and hopefully we should get three different ways out of this. Right, I'll see you after the swish. There we go, all together now, all gritted up and ready for a bit of base coating. Now, very quickly on the base coating, I am using, uh, this is house paint, uh, matte wall paint, okay? Slightly watered down, yeah. So there you go, put that in there. And then what I'm gonna do is, touch PVA. Yeah, the PVA helps it bond, okay? We haven't sealed this with watered down PVA, yeah, the grit. So all I'm doing is I'm mixing a bit of PVA in with the base coat. And then just to thin it down a little, a little bit of our high quality H2O. Yeah, just normal tap water. Yeah, and that gives it a no nice dark brown. And then guys, I mean, you know, I know it's a tutorial, but it is just a simple matter of get your brush, you know, paint your grit. Yeah, important thing is if you haven't sealed it, with watered down PVA, then what you need to do is make sure that you don't go over it where you've already done it. Because once it gets soaked, it'll get loose, yeah, and you, it'll move around. So just get your paint on, yeah, and then move on to the next bit. Yeah, don't worry if it doesn't give it a full coating because you're gonna be dry brushing over the top anyway. Yeah, so, you know, I'm just gonna crack on and get these base coated. See you in a sec. Right guys, I've got the base colour on these and when it comes to sandbags, the thing to remember is that sandbags themselves are typically anywhere between sort of almost white and sort of a yellow colour, depending on whether they're made out of sort of like a plastic mesh or hessian. Yeah, but essentially they're fabric. That being said, yeah, they absorb dirt and moisture and dust and all that sort of stuff. And so the color of a sandbag really depends on its environment. So with that in mind, I thought we'd do three different colors. In the case of our really, really nicely sculpted ones, these, yeah, I've gone for this, yeah, which is just a household beige, a warm beige. 
yeah? And we're going to use this to represent really light sandbags in, you know, in a dry environment or a dryish environment, so they're not that dirty, okay? Moving on, we've got our bunker. Now, our bunker has been done with a yellow ochre, yeah, and this is like a mustard yellow. Yeah, I'm using a lot more artistic colours now. Uh, all our model paints use them, I'm just using the proper names, but you know, Tau Sept Orca, you know, without that sort of stuff, and you get the idea. And it gives you that colour. Now, this is sort of mid range dirty, yeah, we'll give it a wash and then we'll give it a dry brush. That will watch, that will step it up. And then finally, yeah, I wanted some really, really dirty ones. So, what I've done is I've gone for the full on brown for that wall piece. Yeah, and I've base coated it in like a chocolate brown. Yeah, from Wilco's Nutmeg Spice. <laughs> yeah, but just a dark brown. Yeah, all the ground done in my standard dark brown. <laughs> right, the next job we need to do is we've got to put some washes on these. Yeah, now applying the washes is pretty simple. It's just applying a wash over them. Yeah, so I'm only going to sort of show you on one, but I want to talk about the different washes. Okay, the lighter your colour, the lighter your washes need to be, to be perfectly honest. You can use dark washes and darken it down, but you're defeating the purpose of doing them lighter. So, for this one, I'm going to use a sepia, yeah, and in that case, yeah, I'm going to use the old GW one to show for that one. Now, for these, I'm going to use probably, uh, what should we use? I'm going to use raw umber. Or maybe a bit of burnt umber, but a dark wash, yeah, because I really want to get into the recesses and really make sort of tone it down, tone the yellow down, yeah, and really darken this up. So, moving forward, let's just get some sepia on this, eh? Yeah, the others, it's a wash, you know what I mean? You shouldn't need to watch me doing a wash. Shouldn't need to watch me doing a wash, does that, is that even English? I don't know, right, so on my brush. Yeah, and the purpose of this is just to bring out those details. Yeah, so paint it over. Ba ba ba. Mm, see what's going on? Yeah, see how it's working? Right, I'm just going to carry on. I'm going to do the same with that. I'm going to do a dark one on these, and then we'll come back with this one. I'll probably add a little bit of black in and really darken it up. See if we can muddy it up, look like it's like, you know, World War One in the trenches sort of thing. Focus on it. There we go. Ah, that's better. Right, see you shortly, guys. Okay, guys, these are all washed up now, and if we go for our really muddy, muddy, muddy sort of sandbags, yeah, imagine really apocalypse battle zone, and <laughs> they've been drenched and blood and, and all sorts of stuff, but really nice. Just got to do the base on this one. There's no more, much more I need to do on this, because you don't highlight these up, if you know what I mean. They're designed to look very muddy and dirty. You know, on a devastated table, they'll look brilliant. Moving on, we've got our ochre sandbags. And now they've had a bit of a dark wash. It's darkened it down a bit, and we've got all our shadows. Yeah? Okay. Now, for this, what we're going to do is we're going to use our warm beige. Okay? Not even model paints. Just a bit of house paint. Yeah, that's the same stuff that we did the base colour in that. And we're going to dry brush it up. And then finally... We've got, uh, watch it, one beige one. And the sepia wash has gone in that. It's pulled out all our details, but we need to give it a fine, watch it, a dry brush. First, with our base colour, the warm beige. And then we're going to step it up. And if it was on my desk, I would show you a little bit of white, just to bring out the very edges. You know what I mean? So, that's my next job. Very quickly, to sort of show you how it's going to go. Dry brushing, if you've never done this before, and I'm assuming you have. Yeah, bit of paint onto your cardboard. Scrape as much of your paint off your brush in one go as you can. Drag up and down. Dry brushing depends on how much you sort of drag off and how clean you get your fibres. Okay, and how much paint. Yeah, a little bit more than that and it would be over brushing. Yeah, but once it's sort of dry, and it's dry brushing, and clever in it. Yeah, and then against the contours. Yeah, always against the contours. Yeah, and if I bring that up very quickly, see? 
Easy peasy. Right, you don't want to watch me just dry brushing for donkey's ages, so I'm going to crack on with these guys. Yeah, I'm going to leave that one as it is, I'm going to dry brush that one, I'm going to dry brush that one up, and then I'm going to give it a little highlight with a little watch fillet, with a little bit of white. So, I'll crack on with that, and I will see you shortly, guys. Just look good, doesn't it? Do like it. So that's them all dry brushed, and if I bring them up to the camera, obviously I didn't do anything with that, so that's exactly the same as before. Yeah, if I bring that one up now, it's had the cream and then a touch of white just to really lighten up. These are going to be my really light ones for sort of dry environment. Yeah, obviously these are my muddy, wet, horrible, apocalyptic ones. And then with our simple watch collet, starting off with a yellow ochre, giving it a bit of a, a, a no, it was an umber wash. Yeah, I, you know, you, you, you dark brown wash. Okay, and then a beige dry brush overall. Yeah, not bad. Now the last thing that we need to do is just dress the edges. And you've got to do this to sort of tie it in with your gaming table. So you want to be looking at using the same sort of flock and ground basing that you've used on your table and your models. Okay, I'm going to use a couple of these. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this one. Yeah, first of all, I'm going to show you quickly on this one so you know what to do. And then, you know, on these I'll just get them done and bring them, once they're, bring them back to you once they're done. Not sure on this one. We'll figure it out as we go. That's the joy of terrain, isn't it? You know? Never, not really sure what we're going to do here, but we'll figure it out. Right, so, wet brush. Yeah, I'm using uh, raw PVC, so I haven't diluted it or anything like that. Yeah, it just dries quicker. Yeah, you can thin it down, you don't need it this thick, but it dries thicker. And all I'm going to do is brush this on. So I'll brush this on here, and then we'll come back when we're ready to watch up to sort of flock it up. So all PVA'd up and ready to sort of start the flocking. So first off, a little mid-tone, and I just want to use this for a bit of spotting, just sort of at the back and a couple of places on the front. So a little tiny, tiny sprinkle. I'll bring it up to the camera, show you in a second. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah, so if I bring it up, just a little bit, you know what I mean? Next job. I want to really lighten this up and give it give the idea that it's you know it's quite a dry dry environment. So let's go with my really really light flock for this one. And there we are, guys. That's flocked up nice and light. I'll add a couple of little extra clumps as I go before we sort of round this up. But you can see how the really light yeah uh, sandbag tones work really well with a light flock. Yeah, like I say, this was cream and a bit of white, and overall, yeah. Like that. I didn't do the lines on the back, did I? I cheated there. <laughs> yeah, so there we are. Right, all that remains now is for me to very quickly just flock this one up and flock that one up. So, guys, I'm going to get stuck into that and I'll be back in just a second when they're all done. We've got a little bit of clump foliage and, you know, a couple of tufts on there. And I'll be able to show, you, show off the final piece. See you shortly, guys. See, I told you I'd sort it out. Okay, they're all dry now. Right, let's go through them. Right, first I sort of dry and arid one. It's not really that arid to be truthful, but you see I've gone for the light flock tone, yeah, and that's given it that beautiful sort of look, and it really ties in with the, the sandbags. The sandbags, they were a cream with a, a sepia wash, okay, and then, which is burnt sienna, and then another cream dry brush and a very light white dry brush just over the edges to really make it pop. Yeah, a couple of light plants in as well, ties it in, yeah, and then you end up with something like that. Not bad, eh? Not bad at all. Right, moving on. We have our little sandbag bunker. Yeah, the, the inside's a bit rough and ready, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but it's about showing you about the sandbags, not showing you how to do, like, interiors of bunkers. I don't think I've, I'll ever do a tutorial on the interiors. You never know with me, do you? Right, but once again, yeah, really simple technique. This one we started with a, uh, a yellow ochre. Yeah, uh, then we sort of, we, did, we gave it a nice heavy brown wash, then we simply went over it with the beige, and that's all that's been done with this. Yeah, and it looks brilliant. Once again, slightly darker tones just to represent it's sort of Northern European, that sort of environment. I could have muddied this up a bit around the bottom, to be truthful, thinking about, you know, just stain it a little. Little tip for you if you want to do it, you know, it looks great without. And then finally, and muddy ones. Now remember, this is just to show you sort of like, remember, sandbags don't have to be white. Sandbags are canvas. 
yeah, or plastic, but essentially they are material and they will, will absorb mud, they will absorb oil, they will absorb blood and brains and whatever you want to splash across them. So for your apocalyptic ones, I went for this, I've really dirtied these up. Simple light brown and then a wash of black and dark brown mixed together. Yeah, we've got put a bit of dark mossy sort of heather flocking on, that was from Gale Force 9. Yeah, we then put some dark plants on and sla splash more wash over it. Yeah, and as you can see, works quite well. But these were cheap and easy, you know what I mean? Dead easy to do. Yeah, uh, with regards to how much to put t together, yeah, obviously with the bases and that sort of stuff, you know, bases have their own cost. But with regards to sandbags, there's probably about 50 p's worth of sandbags here. So they're not expensive, guys. They're really not. So that's it, guys. That wraps up this let's build on making sandbag barricades and bunkers. Uh, let's settle for the long shot, eh? So guys, that wraps up this Let's Make video on making sandbag bunkers and barricades. Now the important thing on this is, it's not about the flocking or the basing, the key thing, the, the principles with the sandbags on this one, yeah? Lots of information, a really easy way of doing it with Das Modeling Putty. We looked at the more finer sculpted thing, it's gonna take you longer but it's gonna look nicer. We've looked at three different ways of painting them and hopefully, although I haven't covered all the different ways of painting sandbags and the techniques that you can do, that really dark one uh, has sort of made you realise that, you know, sandbags don't come in one colour. Trust me, me and Mike have seen them in absolutely all colours. Agreed? Yeah. Yeah, we've seen them empty and full. Yeah, we prefer them full. Agreed? Done by somebody else. Yeah, done by somebody else. And mean. here's a little tip for you, yeah? If you're going to fill a sandbag, fill it with rocks, not sand. Rocks are far better at stopping bullets. Ain't that true? Mm -hmm. Yeah? They just hurt more when you're trying to rest your arm and like, you know, been there on a stag for 12 hours. <laughs> anyway, we're wrapped in. It's been like this all night. Okay, guys, listen, if you've liked this video, you've found it useful, all those sort of things, like button. Yeah, if you've got any questions, any comments, anything like that, anything you want to ask me, anything to add to this video, get it in the comments, guys. I like you talking to me. And as always, yeah, if, you know, this terrain madness, malarkey, jolly circle. If you're just loving these videos and you want to help me make more and help me with my terrain dream, yeah, check out the patron thing, wherever the link is, it's somewhere, it'll be over there. It'll cover mic, no, it's that way, innit? Yeah, check out the patron thing, yeah. One dollar, just one dollar. You can't even buy a pint or a pork pie for a dollar, but you can help some nutter in Stoke on Trent help the rest of the community build awesome terrain. So over to you, Terrainiacs, with that one. In the meantime, we have lots, lots, lots more coming up. Lots more. It's going to be great. I'm loving it being in here and getting into it. Right, guys. I bet you've never seen me smile so much, have you? Until next time, ta -da. Say goodbye, Mike. Goodbye, Mike. <laughs> Laters. <laughs>